Okay, so I think it was a few weeks ago now that I saw Cradle of Filth at Piranha Bar. Uh, it took me a while to get around to making this video because life has been so fucking hectic lately. Um, but it was a really, really good show, and it was actually the fourth time. Uh, well, that wasn't the fourth time, but it was one of the four times that I've been to uh, Corona Theater in like a two week time frame. <laughs> the other shows were, uh, sorry, I think I said Piranha earlier. I meant to say. Uh, Corona Theater. The other shows were, of course, Children of Bodom, which I talked about uh, before, and the other two were Flesh God Apocalypse and Earl Sweatshirt, which I'll talk about later on. But Cradle of Filth was, uh, it was a great show. The first band that came out was Raven Black, who are this, like, really sort of, I want to call them gothy, but not really uh, industrial metal band. Um, they all dress like clowns, which is really cool. Uh, it really reminded me of the Stolen Babies, which is a band that I'm a huge fan of. The best way you could describe their music would be circus metal. Uh, technically, they're like an avant-garde metal band with some elements of punk, like horror punk here and there. But uh, Raven Black definitely felt like that same vibe, but they were a lot heavier than the Stolen Babies are. And they kind of had more of a new metal vibe uh, with them as well. But they were really cool because they uh, they all had these really interesting costumes. They had a really nice look about them. And when they came out on stage, their front woman, uh, whose stage name is Raven, she came out with a, uh, a parasol, like an umbrella, that she was using to kind of cover her face so you couldn't really see who she was. And she didn't remove it to reveal herself to the audience until they started playing the first song. And every time they finished a song, she would go back and switch out what she had in her hands for a different prop. So she had like, um, I think a billy club at one point, and then there was like a, a pair of shackles. Um, there was a teddy bear, a whole bunch of like the things you'd expect from like uh, a gothic metal band. So they were really cool. And honestly, I didn't know what to expect from them musically, but musically speaking, I actually really liked them to the point where I downloaded their album onto my phone afterwards and listened to it for, for quite a bit. It's really short, it's only about 20 million, uh, 29, 22 minutes long, something like that. It's almost, it's more of an EP than an album, but uh, I don't really listen to music in that vein very often. It was something that I definitely would have liked more when I was a teenager, when Slipknot was like my favorite band but it was still really enjoyable and I would absolutely see them again if they came through Montreal. Uh, after Raven Black, it was Wednesday 13, who I believe was in Marilyn Manson at one point. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, and I actually got them mixed up with uh, Motionless in White, so I was expecting this like really shitty kind of like Pierce the Veil-esque like garbage metalcore band and I was so confused as to why someone like that We'll be playing with Cradle of Filth, like it did not make any sense. But uh, no, I was actually pleasantly surprised by them too. They were also more of like an industrial metal band. Um, you know, they came out wearing like some really outlandish costumes. Their guitar player, one of them, had like this hairdo where you know, like one half of his head is shaved and the other half is like super long, goes all the way down here. And it was like he kind of reminded me of uh, the main villain in the fifth element actually. Uh, I can't remember his name now, but the guy that Gary Oldman plays. Um, so I kind of laughed at that. But they actually put on a really good performance. Uh, they, they seemed like when they first started that they were kind of doing the whole like, yeah, we're a grim metal band sort of shtick. But then like as the show went on, they kind of loosened up a bit more and started kind of, you know, mugging for the audience and really getting out there and trying to get the crowd going, which was cool. It's nice to see a band that looks like they're actually having fun on stage. Um, I also do have to say that Wednesday 13 himself, when he first came out on stage, he was wearing um, like this big cloak that obscured most of his face, and he had a big plastic hook on his hand, which was like obviously a reference to that old horror movie whose name that I can't remember at the, off the top of my head, where um, you know the couple's like making out in the car, and then the guy comes by and like scrapes the hook on the car. It was like obviously a reference to that. And that was really fucking cool. His costumes were, were sick. And then like after the first song he ripped that off and revealed that his body was like all painted in like yellow and golden and silver paint. And um, he's a pretty fit guy, you know, he's got some he's got some abs on him, so it looked good. Um, 
And then uh, there was a part <laughs> where he put on this uh, mask that was on the back of his head. So, you know, he would be like singing to the crowd front ways with his actual face and then he would turn around and there would be like a mask of his face on the back of his head so it looked like you know his body was all turned around he was doing this weird like almost contortion-esque shit with his uh <laughs> with his body and that was that was pretty cool too so all in all that was a great performance as well i, I probably wouldn't listen to wednesday 13 on my own time because that was again similar to Raven Black, stuff that I would have enjoyed more when I was in my new metal phase when I was a teenager, but definitely an enjoyable band to see live, and I would probably go see them again if they came back to Montreal too. But then of course Cradle of Filth came out, and they're one of those bands that, you know, when you're in the metal scene, especially if you're in the black metal world like I am, Cradle of Filth is very much maligned by a lot of, you know, the true cult folks. And uh, I don't really pay any fucking attention to that because I think it's all bullshit. Um, sure, you can say that, like, you know, Cradle's first three albums, like The Principle of Evil Made Flesh, uh, Dusk and Her Embrace, which is my personal favorite, and Cruelty and the Beast are, like, their only good albums. But I like a lot of the shit that they did after that, too. You know, a lot of people think Thornography is, like, one of their worst albums, but there are some tracks on that that I really dig. Uh, I mean, one of my favorite songs by Cradle of Filth is uh, The Fetus of a New Day Kicking. I can't remember which album that's off, but it's from like the midpoint in their career when a lot of people think they sucked. But, you know, they got rid of uh, Paul Allender, their guitar player, and brought in two other guys whose names I can't remember off the top of my head. But then they put out Hammer of the Witches, which is like the best thing that they've done since the beginning of their career. That album fucking kicks ass. And, um, of course, the tour that they're doing right now is uh, in support of the album they put out after that, Cryptoriana, The Seductiveness of Decay which is a good album. It, I don't think it's as good as Hammer of the Witches. It feels a bit like less interesting. Like the, the melodies and riffs on there aren't as uh, you know ear-catching as the ones on Hammer of the Witches were, but it was still a great album. And of course they played the big hits, well not hits, but the, the big singles from that release. Um, like You'll Know the Lion by His Claws and uh, the first track that they released from the, the album. I can't remember the name of it now. Um, and when they came out, it was it was great. I, I was so excited to see them because Cradle has been like such a huge influence on me as a musician, especially Danny Filth's writing. Like I love his lyrics, the gothic imagery and the poetry. It's it's fantastic. His use of vocabulary is has always been like so influential on me. And I've actually learned a lot of words that I probably never would have heard before, thanks to Cradle of Filth. So I was super excited when they came out. And of course, the whole band came out first. And uh, including Lindsay Schoolcraft, which, you know, the audience loved her. I think her voice is amazing, and she can play, you know, the keyboards on any of uh, the songs that they've done in the past, as well as the new shit, too. She's incredibly talented. I follow her on both Instagram and Tumblr, and she's, uh, you can tell that she's someone who genuinely loves Cradle of Filth's music and just loves being a musician and doing this as a career, you know, and that's awesome. I definitely came through in, like, what... The, the, the attitude that she brought on stage as well. But then, of course, Danny came out and he was wearing this, uh, you know, this hood very similar to Wednesday 13 where it was like obscuring his face so you couldn't see him. And then uh, they launched into, um, I think the first song that they played actually, yeah, the first song that they played was the lead single from um, Cryptoriana, the name of which, again, I cannot remember. But it was, it was fucking awesome. You know, he threw the robe off and then just launched into that epic, the, the the trademark Danny Shriek, which was great, um, and then they played they played a bunch of other songs too, they played some tracks from Hammer of the Witches, specifically um, the right wing of the Garden Triptych, which was the big single that came off of that album, and a lot of older shit too. I really wanted them to play a gothic romance from Dusk and Her Embrace, which is my favorite Cradle of Filth song of all time, but of course, because that's such a deep cut, they're not going to play that at this point, especially when they're touring in support of Cryptoriana. Um, and then they uh, finished the um, the encore, because they, they left without playing like the two of their biggest songs, and they came back, they played Nymphetamine, and they played Her Ghost in the Fog, which is what they closed with, and of course the audience went nuts. and. Uh, I gotta say, this is one of the craziest uh, indoor shows that I've ever been to. Like, 
usually uh, when it comes to a bigger show that's outside like when I went to Heavy Montreal last year like the mosh pits in that were insane they were so huge like biggest circle pit that I've ever been in was for Havoc which was an egg outside right but when you're in a smaller indoor venue I mean Corona Theater is pretty big but it's still relatively small in comparison to that kind of outdoor space like, the pits can get pretty intense, but there's only so intense they can get before, you know, people start actually getting hurt. <laughs> and this was kind of like one of those shows where that actually started happening. Like, people were, you know, going fucking crazy, and it was awesome. Like, one of my friends actually got, like, um, I think he got decked in the eye, which was unfortunate for him. But, you know, I got kicked in the head, too, and... It's just kind of what you expect, especially at a show like this, you know, P Cradle of Filth is one of those bands that people people either hate them with really intense vitriol, or they love them to death, and I'm definitely in the love them to death category. So, I, I was just not expecting that amount of energy from that crowd, especially on, uh, on a weeknight, because I'm pretty sure that show... Oh, you know, it was, it was on a Saturday night, actually, which definitely explains why people were fucking crazy. Um, everyone just, you know, being really drunk. This one guy actually got really, really fucking wasted and started pissing everyone off. To the point that there was this one really tall guy that was behind him who just, you know, got sick of his shit. Saw that he was pissing off everyone else, so he just grabbed him by his shoulders, turned around, and fucking literally dragged him out of the venue. Like, like not outside, because I couldn't see, but, like, the way the Corona is set up is there's two staircases that go down each side into the actual, uh, the actual pit, like, in front of the stage, and he just took him and dragged him, like, way up the steps, so I'm assuming he just fucking got rid of him, which was hilarious, and everyone was very thankful for that, because that guy was being a fucking asshole. Um, yeah, I, after, after the show was over, I really wanted to buy some Raven Black merch, but unfortunately the Cradle of Filth stuff was so expensive, so I had to get, of course, the infamous, possibly most infamous t-shirt in metal history, the trademark uh, Vestal, Vestal Masturbation shirt, with, of course, Jesus is a cunt on the back. I don't know if you can see it, but... So, very thankful to very, very happy to have this infamous piece of merch in uh, in my closet and collection. But yeah, that was my experience seeing Cradle of Filth. Uh, it was fucking awesome. If you get a chance to see them on this Cryptoriana world tour, I think it's a world tour, then, you know, absolutely go do it, because it was totally worth it. Uh, I don't know if Raven Black and Wednesday 13 are on the tour with uh, for the entire duration that it's going on, but if they are, they're worth seeing too, even if industrial metal isn't your thing. Um, I think I would have preferred if some more, like, harsher, gothic, extreme bands were touring with Cradle of Filth. You know what would be an awesome show, actually, because, again, I mentioned that uh, me and Aaron saw Flesh God Apocalypse, uh, like, literally a few days later, and an amazing tour idea, I think, would be Cradle of Filth, Septic Flesh, and Flesh God Apocalypse, because all three of those bands have that symphonic element, but they have a different feel for it, you know? So, like, that would be, like, a dream tour, in my opinion. But yeah, anyway, if you get a chance to go see Cradle of Filth, absolutely do it. And I give this show, uh, because of the drunken asshole that was next to me, I'm gonna say, and, and also because of, uh, you know, Wednesday 13 not being, like, something that I would actually listen to in my own time, I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10. But, Definitely, definitely a fucking awesome experience. I, I want to see Cradle of Filth again. So yeah, see ya.